We are a West Side Family Church, and we're very grateful for the fact that every weekend when 5,000 plus of us gather in 10 different locations around the globe, a third of that crowd is under the age of 18. How about a hand for our kids today? Could we do that? So grateful for them. Had an unusual experience this week, my first ever basal cell skin cancer removal. Uh, I had a little mole here on the side of my nose that I've had for some time, but it was changing color, getting a little bigger. Wife made me go see the dermatologist, found out it's basal cell skin cancer. Now, the good news is if you're going to have skin cancer, this is the right one to have because if they remove it, you're done. You know, that's the nice part. It doesn't metastasize. It doesn't go to other places in your body. So when I saw the doctor, I said, well, what's the big reason then to have it taken off? He said, it will take over your nose. If you don't do something with this, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger. I said, done deal. Got it done. All good. I believe every human being on the planet has a cancer of the soul. It is the cancer of selfishness. It is the cancer of self-centeredness. It's the cancer that says life is about me and nobody else. And if we don't find a way to deal with it, if we don't remove it, it takes over our entire lives. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's week number two in our series called All Influence. We're talking about how God gives us influence with other people so that we can impact them and lead them into the kingdom so that we can partner with Jesus to see the kingdom of God expand. And that's what we're about at Westside. We want to see the spiritual landscape of our world changed by the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Here's the big idea for the series. Write this in, whether you're joining us at Lenexa, at Speedway, at Lansing, or online. Drop some things down. You ready? If you want to have big influence for God, you have to go all in. If you want to have big influence for God, it's an all-in thing. We serve an all-in God who went all-in for us, left his throne in heaven, came and lived a perfect all-in life, died a perfect all-in death, was raised a perfect all-in Savior, and you and I have a choice. We either commit to that or we don't. We either go for it or we don't. I believe he deserves our best, our all in. Last week, pastors Brian and Sean led us in week one where they talked about praying boldly. How do you pray bold prayers? And they talked about the global impact that Westside is having. And it truly is an amazing thing to me that God is writing us into his global story, that he's got a role for us to play. Today, the big idea is this. Would you write it down? Show me your prayers, and you have told me your dreams. We're going to talk about how to, how to dream big today. How do you dream big? Something big that you want to see God do. Show me your prayers, and I believe you've shown me your dreams. Why is that? Because when you've really got a dream, it seeps its way into your prayers. Have you ever found this to be the case? You're driving down the road, and you're, you're praying about something, and you realize you're praying about your dream. You're praying about the thing God's got on your heart, or you're or just going along at night, and your brain is going, and you're thinking about, you're dreaming this, and you're praying that, and Lord, would you make that happen? I believe that what captures our imagination also captures our heart, that what we dream about, we pray about. And here's a cool thought. What does Jesus dream and pray for us? See, I'm a crazy person. I think about these things. What would he dream and pray for Sutherland? What's his dream for me? What's his prayer for me? Great news is we don't have to wonder. We can find it. In fact, write this into your notes as well as I pick mine up. I have the same notes you do. Only difference is mine are filled in and scribbled on. And sometimes I actually pay attention to them. Are you ready? Here it is. We know without any doubt what Jesus dreamed and wanted for his followers from his prayers. All we've got to do to see what Jesus dreams and wants for you and I is to read his prayers. And that's what we're doing in John chapter 17. We've got the last prayer of Jesus before he's crucified, the night before the crucifixion. It's the longest recorded prayer of Jesus. I think it's the weightiest recorded prayer of Jesus. He knows the cross is coming the next day, and he prays, check this out, guys, for us, 
for those will lead to Christ and for the impact they will have around the world. He's dreaming and praying for us. Listen to the prayer, John chapter 17. It's in five pieces. We're going to look at the five things Jesus prays for us. Holy Father, he says, protect them by the power of your name so that they may be one as we are one, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. What did Jesus pray and dream of for his followers? Let's make it current tense. What does he pray and dream of for you and I today? First thing he prays for, he prays for our safety. Jesus dreams and prays of our safety. Notice his first prayer. Holy Father, he says, protect them by the power of your name. How many parents or grandparents are in the room? Hands up. How many hundreds or thousands of times have we prayed for the safety of our kids? Every time they go outdoors to play as a preschooler, every time they sleep over at somebody's house as an elementary kid, every time that they walk out the door as a teenager, you're doing this the whole time that they're going out. You're praying for them. You're concerned for them, not just their physical safety, but their emotional safety, their spiritual safety. You're you're praying for protection. You're praying for purity. You're praying for them to stay on track, not make the same dumb mistakes that you and I made. We're praying all of those things. That is the heartbeat of any parent, and it is also the heartbeat of God. He's praying for you and I to stay on the straight and narrow. He wants us to not blow it the way others have. In fact, guys, once in a while, we get tired of rules. Have you noticed that? Why does God give us rules? For the same reason we give our kids rules, to keep them out of the ditch, to keep them out of harm's way. I mean, once in a while, when we're shaking our fist at God going, really? That's what you're telling me? Really? Yeah, for my good. He wants to protect us. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need all the protecting you can get. Tell them. You need it. We need it, guys. It's the heartbeat of God. He wants to protect us. Secondly, he dreams and prays for our unity. He dreams and prays for our unity. This is the second thing. Jesus prays for. Notice what he says. So that they may be one as we are one. Now the we here is Father, Son, and Spirit. Jesus has been talking about that relationship since John 14. All the way through 15 and 16 and now 17. He's talking about how the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one. How much do you think God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit are on the same page? What do you think? I'm thinking they're pretty well lined up. They are on the same page. Jesus prays that we, his church, his people, his family, will have the unity that the Father and the Son and the Spirit have. Now, why is that? Because if the enemy can get us divided, he has already defeated us. Jesus said, a house cannot stand divided Can't stand divided. That's true in a family. You let division go long-term in a family, family fails. You let division go long-term in a business, the business fails. You let division go long-term in any relationship, any organization, any church, it will fail. This is not in your notes, but i got to do it. Put a little side margin over here that says devil's strategy. Devil's strategy. We're going to do a whole sermon on this sometime, but let me give it to you. I've mentioned it a couple of times in the last few months. He uses the same three-point strategy all the time. We ought to figure this out. His first step is distraction. So devil's strategy, number one, distraction. Distraction. He tries to get us focused on the minor things instead of the major things. Did you know that's how he tears relationships apart? He gets us fighting about the minor junk. It's not the mountain of marriage that you're climbing that gets to you. It's the rock of detail that gets in your shoe. Are you with me? 
It's the little stuff. He gets us distracted. And when we're not paying attention to the main thing anymore, we can easily become, secondly, discouraged. Discouragement is his second strategy. He'll start whispering things to you like, she doesn't really care or she'd change. He doesn't really care. He'd fix that. You know, they don't really value me at this company or they would treat me differently than this. You start getting discouraged. And the third step is division. Because you stay discouraged long enough, you're saying, I'm out of here. I don't have to take this. I don't have to stay with this. If the enemy can divide us, he's won. In fact, you know what his strategy is in American Christianity right now? Get the churches and the pastors fighting with each other so that they won't fight the enemy. It's a brilliant strategy. No, he'll use it in your family, in your home, in your circumstance as well. Jesus says, "Uh uh-uh, keep your unity. Number three, Jesus dreams and prays for our joy. I like this one. Our joy. He wants us to have joy. Notice what he says, so that the measure, so that they may have, rather, the full measure of my joy. Would you circle my? Whose joy is it that's available to us? It's Jesus' joy. Now, I've experienced this, so let me speak to it personally. Jesus' joy is a lot better than Sutherland joy. Because Sutherland joy depends on circumstance. You give me $1,000 this afternoon, I will dance for you. (laughs) On the spot, I cannot be bought, I can be rented for short periods of time. I'll dance. I mean, I'll have a burst of happiness. It'll be awesome. But that's not joy. That only lasts as long as the money lasts. That only lasts as long as the good time lasts. That only lasts as long as the calm seas of life last, which is not very long. Jesus says, you can have my joy. He's talking about joy the night before he's crucified. And he knows it's coming. I'm not sure joy would have been my response. But he's praying for our joy. Now, what is that? Let me give you a verse to look up later. It's Philippians 4.10. By the way, if you can't spell all these New Testament books, that's why you abbreviate. PH 4.10. Philippians 4.10. Okay? You can look it up later. Here's what it says. Paul says, I've learned whatever state I'm in that I can be content. Paul was obviously not a Texan. He would not have been content in any state. That's a very bad joke. (laughs) The word for state literally means condition. And for years I read this verse as whatever physical condition I'm in, I'm going to have joy. I'm going to be content. But the word for state, condition, also refers to emotional condition. Whatever emotional frame of mind I'm in, I'm still going to have joy. So here's what that means. I can have joy when I'm flat. I can have joy when I'm tired. I can have joy when I'm frustrated. I can have joy if it's Jesus' joy, regardless of what's going on in my physical or emotional condition. Jesus prays for us to have joy. What a thought. Amazing idea. Fourth one, Jesus dreams and prays for our holiness. He dreams and prays for our holiness. I love this. I love it. I want you to write down a verse. 1 Thessalonians, again, 1 TH, 4 3. 1 Thessalonians 4 3. The verse we're looking at here in John 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. But 1 Thessalonians 4 3 says, This is the will of God that you be sanctified. For this is the will of God. One translation says that you be made holy. Now, made holy, sanctified, all mean the same thing. They mean like Jesus. Like Jesus. His will is for you and I to be like Jesus. Now, think with me, class. Come on, think. If it's God's will for you to be made holy, what's the chances it's not going to happen? Zip. Zip. All Christ followers are going to become like Jesus. The only question is when. You can resist that process and be made like Jesus when you go to heaven, when you die. Or you could cooperate with that process and start becoming like Jesus. Now, for the sake of the rest of us, would you please cooperate? (laughs) Are you with me? 
He's going to make us holy, guys. He's going to make us like Jesus. And he gives us the option of that happening now or the alternative that we'll just resist and be in control and be stubborn and decide that life is awful and it only happens later. The journey of becoming like Christ is the most exciting part of following him. Seeing him change your anger into peace. Seeing him change your frustration into joy. Seeing him change people you don't even like into people that you love. It's amazing to watch Jesus come to life in us. Fifth thing Jesus prays for and dreams of. He prays and dreams for our purpose. He prays and dreams for our purpose. Notice what he says is, you sent me into the world. I have sent them into the world. Three years ago this month, we did a series called Sent. We talked about the fact that we're all sent. We're all, if you're a Christ follower, we're a pastor, a priest, a missionary, a minister. All of us. And the challenge is find your parish. Find the group of people that God wants you to minister to, serve, pastor, and do it. We're sent. We're commissioned. Jesus is saying, I'm praying for you guys to figure out, you're my partners in the kingdom of God. You're the only partners I have. So step up and partner. Step up and go. Jesus, what an amazing set of prayers and dreams. Dreams and praise for my safety, for our unity, for my joy, for our holiness, for our purpose. Now, that's what Jesus prays and dreams for every Christ follower around the globe. Let's step it up to specifics for a minute. What is Jesus praying and dreaming for Westside? What's he praying and dreaming for? For West Side. A couple of years back, he started whispering by his spirit something crazy into our ears. He started saying, What would it be like to reach, write this in, a thousand new unchurched families in the next two years? What would it be like to reach a thousand new unchurched families? That's what we started on, the faith adventure. A year ago, we're halfway through it. Today's a bit of progress report. I want you to welcome our visionary architect of our all-in faith journey, Mr. Dan Shavern. He's going to share with you. Morning, all. Whoa. What was that? Oops. I almost got trapped there. It's only Troy's guitar, man. It's no big deal. He's got five or six more in the back. All right, we're going to put that right, and don't anyone tell anybody, okay? <laughs> Our little secret. No, Dan, that's not on video or anything. <laughs> that didn't even Sorry, go out Troy. on the internet, bro. <laughs> no, no, nothing, nothing like that. Dan, we, uh, we've always had a tradition at Westside of making room for those that are not here yet. Talk yep. to us about that. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, I'm so proud to be a part of a church where from the very beginning of this church, when we started out in Quivera Road, yeah. which was uh, 1976, The church has always been willing to lay down its own comfort, its own preferences, and said, you know, we're running out of room. We're willing to make room for new people. And that's really been the heart, really a theme that's gone through the the history of our church. That first auditorium of Corvera Road Church held 100 folks then. That's amazing. And they outgrew it and did multiple services. And then they went and met at the middle school, at Trail Ridge Middle School, and then eventually moved out of the middle school into the the box, I call it, over on on Shawnee Mission Parkway and met there. Then we sent a bunch of folks up to Speedway, which has been a great, great adventure. They eventually branched out into Lansing into the prison, yep. and now here we are trying to expand again. It's really, going all in is something we've always done. It really is, So, and, and we're just so excited to be part of what God is doing in this phase, so we get to kind of enjoy this to we say, do. hey, we're going to, you know, if people have made room for us, we're going to make room for the folks behind us. That's a pretty cool opportunity. So the good news is God is blessing Westside, yes, and if is. we sat here, guys, for two hours, we could not give you every highlight of the last year. It has been that amazing. We're just going to throw a few at you very, very quickly, very, very rapid fire. Here's what God's done in the last year. We committed to reach 1,000 new unchurched families. That's been awesome. Dan, tell us about baptism. It's amazing. So since we kind of said, hey, we're going to just throw this thing open and see what God does, not just here, but in Kansas City, Kansas, in in our city, and around the world in four countries, we have actually doubled the number of baptisms this past year, which is astounding. 533 baptisms, and by the way, in counting, we, we keep getting reports back from Asia that, that the efforts there for church planning have exploded. 
And uh, so we're, we're just seeing new people coming into the kingdom and beginning to walk with Jesus Christ. Every time we settle this number, we're trying yeah. to get it set for the end of March, which will be <laughs> one year. It keeps going up, which is a pretty cool problem. Yeah, God. We launched the Port Elizabeth campus. You guys remember Casey and Cassie Robinson that we sent over. By the way, uh, March 30th is their one-year anniversary. They're running over 100 in that brand-new that campus amazing? in Port Elizabeth. Yeah. Is that awesome? cool stuff. Yep. Uh, a lot of people taking next steps, Dan. Yeah, what we're doing is, I mean, we're very intentionally working to engage people from before when they, they know Christ, inviting them into that journey, engaging them as believers, and then followers, and then leaders, people that are reaching and leading other people and serving in ministry. That's a very intentional process, and it's working. One of the coolest things about Westside is we have 60 staff in the States, church staff, 123 internationally. I don't know another church in the States that's got twice as many staff overseas Amazing. as we have here, but that fits who we are. 900 yep. plus people up at Speedway every yep. week. So blessed by that. Uh, Dan, yeah. you're, you have a big heart for the Thailand. I, I do. Westside Bua, Thailand. Here's what's so cool. What it, as part of your giving for All In, we said, hey, we're going to help uh, Westside Bua expand. And so they spent a little bit to expand some areas where the students could, could meet and those kind of things. But what they did was they actually went and built a coffee shop on the main street of Bua, Thailand. And that is a Jesus coffee shop. Let me tell you, that is their missionary outreach to that community. And yeah. it is absolutely, it's a so, Western style coffee shop and it's very popular and they're reaching many people. We're about to do our first church plant in a coffee shop. <laughs> we haven't done one of those pretty, before. Pretty creative. So. Uh, that's pretty cool stuff. Online campus has just continued to amaze us. You may not know this, but at this moment, there are 5,000 plus every week watching online. We actually have more people online now than we have physically present in all 10 of our locations. Big thanks to right. Jason Morris and his crew for that. Uh, three, three things going up at the prison. Yep. And John Oker leads that, and he's here today, and I'm going to embarrass him. John, stand up right there, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. So as part of All In, we were able to add the medium security prison there. And there is amazing, there are amazing things happening. Baptisms happening up there. People coming to know Jesus Christ in that prison. And of course, you know, Jesus said, when you come and visit me, or visit a prisoner. Yeah. You're visiting me. And that's one of the things I love about this church. Westside continues to expand as a regional leader in foster care and adoption care. 200 plus families at Westside have now either are either fostering or have adopted kids. You know that's close to our hearts. Absolutely. Dan, Dan's adopted a daughter. Both of mine are adopted because if we'd have had kids, for me, they'd have been <laughs> dumb and ugly, but we adopted them. <laughs> and now they're bright and beautiful. It's they a are. really cool thing. And, you know, and, and it's just unbelievable that the, the effort you know, it's like you can't outgive God. You can't. We've made some small efforts in Thailand, in, in north uh, eastern Thailand, and it spilled over into Laos. And now there are 80 church plants in Laos from some of the efforts that we've Did done. You catch the number That's eight zero, guys. Only God can Amazing. do that. We really can't uh, take credit except to say. Thank you, Lord. Not only can we not take credit, we never even thought about planting churches in Laos. <laughs> I'll just be we just did church trainings over there yeah. in that near the border. So, guys, God is blessing in amazing, amazing, wonderful ways. Here's yep. the challenge. We're out of prime time space. At 945 and 11 o'clock, we are 80 to 85% <laughs> full every week. That is the case here at Lenexa at Speedway. We've got some seats, but we need to do some things to make them more usable. I asked this morning in the 830 service, Dan, how many guests there were, first-time guests. One couple raised their hands. Bravely. <laughs> guests don't come at 830. They come in prime time. They come at 945 and at 11. And if they walk in now and can't find five seats together, which right now in this room would be difficult, wow, other than a little bit of stuff in the balcony, it's not here. They don't do well. So we need to provide space. It's something we have got to do. So Dan, right. talk us through how we're going to make right. room. So we started uh, a year ago with a commitment to reach 1,000 new families. A year before that, we began a great deal of analysis to figure out, well, what do we need? What space do we need? What kind of space? How much can we afford? How much can't we afford? So we decided that we were called to make room for 1,000 new families, and this is how we're going to do it. First thing, we're, we're going to add adult space. And uh, this shows you a, uh, an actual uh, uh, mock-up. It's a 3D mock-up of whoa, the whoa, design. Whoa, 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 that's moving. Isn't that pretty cool? Do it again. 
of the design of a new 500 seat. Wow. No, no, I got to see it again. <laughs> One more time, guys. I, I don't. How do you make a picture move? Time limit, Dan. Time, time. Oh wow. That's just cool. It's a 500 seat room. It's right. going to sit right out here, guys. Basically, about the same square footage as the bottom of the right. floor here at Lenexa. Right. That'll give us more space. Think about it, Dan. If we use it twice, that's 500 Thousand, more people that's twice, right. three times. Could Unbelievable. Be so we have the room for parents. Now we're going to need a lot more room for kids and students. So here's a new kid space. The beautiful thing about our kid space is we're going to be getting two brand new kid spaces built in the existing student center on two floors. We're going to add a floor there. And then our student spaces, we're going to have two new student spaces back to back uh, to our south here. And, uh, you know, absolutely state-of-the-art student space for middle school to meet at the same time that high school meets. That's a big deal. Yay. As, as a parent with all those grades, I'm going woohoo too. So it's, it's going to be great. What that does is it just doubles our capacity for students, doubles our capacity or triples our capacity for kids, and, and adds for our parents. We've got to do something for Speedway as well. And yep. for those of you that are at Speedway, you know this, those that have visited, the difficulty at Speedway is all the seats in the movie theater are not really usable. Nobody sits in the front row of a movie. Why is that? <laughs> this is why. you got 30-foot Dan right there. The other struggle in that room is the sound is really loud in the front and not nearly as loud in the back. So we're going to totally redo the audio system, totally redo the video system. We're going to move to HD projection, which yes. will sharpen the picture for them and the ability. It's going to make every seat in the room usable. And at that moment, Dan, Speedway will actually have more primetime seats available than we do. That's exactly right. So what we really need to do there is we need to make that experience more enjoyable, less blurry, less frustrating. And, and by the uh, way, Dan and I got to be out at Speedway last weekend. Yeah. Dan, they may be the best of Westside. They're, they were pretty fired up. They're yeah, pioneers out there, so we're very cool proud stuff. of Speedway. It, it really and truly is amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, we're going to expand our impact as well, not just capacity here at Primetime, yep. but impact around the world. That includes the South Africa campus. We'll continue to sponsor, continue to be part of. Casey's doing a great job there. Yep. Continues what we're doing in Thailand. Continues what we're doing in orphan care. Dan. Yep. India, South Africa. We have, we've, we're moving towards sustainability. We're moving toward church planting in those communities where we have built a great deal of goodwill. And we are seeing now things happening that just opening up new avenues to influence for Christ. It's very exciting. And then also closer to home in Kansas City, Kansas, in our city, uh, we have our mission houses going gangbusters now. Uh, we have church planting options that, are, that have just this fallen is, in our lap. This is way cool, guys. It appears that later this year, we're going to plant both a Spanish church and a Bhutanese church in downtown Kansas City. And the cool part of that is, is my Spanish is más o menos. It's not bad. My Bhutanese is horrible. <laughs> so we're going to be able to reach a group of people that we cannot reach right now in an area where they live. That is so awesome. We're right going to on. get to do that. So it's about providing capacity. It's about yeah. impact around the world. But Dan, it's also about taking care of the future. Absolutely. So what we said uh, a year ago was that we need to start now so that we can be ready to have more room two years later. Well, now it's just one year later. Folks. That's an outside view. Yeah. Dan, wait, wait, where's my truck? You know, they, they didn't have that in the program, Dan. Uh, they didn't. They I'm looking didn't at the it. monitor. I'm looking. Maybe it's on. That's not on there. No, it's not in there. There's a problem with this picture, guys. We need my truck in this picture, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's really important. We are going to expand we'll the, the facilities here. Also show you what it looks like on the inside. That's the expanded commons going down the way. Yeah. The gallery kicked out. Dan's idea. Yeah. Nice idea, buddy. Thank you. Like that. Expanded bathroom. Yeah, so this doesn't exist this part back here doesn't exist yet. That's a mock-up of that part with, with new double doors that go out to the south. And this hallway, oh, lost it, but the hallway goes down to the student center wing, which is really exciting. Again, that's another view from the ah, platform of yes. the worship area. Pumped about that and what it's going to Lots do of room. for us. So Dan, we got to figure out a way to pay for this. Talk to yes, us about indeed. that. Well, we made an agreement. We said that we did not want to get a additional long term mortgage no. debt. So what we said was, you know, if we're not going to borrow, then we're going to pay as we go. And that requires us to go ahead and step up our budget and add $5 million in order to do that here in, in Speedway, in around, in around the world. So our normal budget is $6 million a year. That's Two right. years of that's twelve. Exactly. $5 million for the expansion yep. here, the things at Speedway, all around the world, $17 million total. Rock and roll. That does yeah. it.
That's what we're after. So how can we engage in this? We're a year in, guys. I'm going to come back in a minute and give you exact numbers for a progress report, but we're asking you to do three things. First, pray. Pray about what God wants you to do. We're going to ask everyone to make a new commitment for this second year. Talk about that in a minute. But pray about what God wants you to do. Secondly, Dan, they need to evaluate. Right. Just uh, just talk to the Lord and and see where you are with your generosity. You know, it's it's been a fun season for us. It's been a fun season for for me to think through. You know, wow. You know, what kind of stretch has this been for for the Shavern family? And and it, it really has been. And it's been fun and it's been challenging all at the same time. So you know, the idea though is just to be intentional. Take yeah. a look at it and see where you are and see what God is calling you to give. And then you commit also, guys. And that's what we're going to do on the thirtieth, where we commit together and say, Hey, wow, yep. what can we do as a church in this next year? It's going to be a fun amazing, amazing journey. Looking forward to that. Well, Dan, what's your last word on All In? Well, I, I want to say just uh, thank you. Thank you for being All In. Thank you for growing together as a church. Th- this is something that we cannot do uh, alone. Any one of us could never pull this off. This is something that we do together. And it's something that we have many folks that have given very sacrificially, and so we wanted to thank you. And there are also a bunch of new people, and we wanted to invite you in uh, because we're going to need you to make this goal. We do. We Dan and I are going to be hosting a lunch today at yes. noon, a dessert Wednesday night, a lunch next Sunday as well. Hope you'll come and be a part of it. How about a hand for Dan? Thank Shadow. you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Dan. Awesome. Man. Awesome. So go back to your notes for a minute and let me fill in a couple of things. How are we doing so far? We are 53% of the way there on families, Okay. of the way there. Write that in. 53% means 533 baptized, 1,000 is the goal. Wow. Guys, that is incredible. We're at 42% on our giving. That's projected through the end of March. One year in, we ought to be at 50, right? One year in of a two-year journey. So we're slightly ahead on our outreach, slightly behind on our giving. We want to go after that. So again, We're asking you guys to do these things. Keep praying. That's huge. Keep dreaming. That's huge. Keep giving. That's huge. Okay? One more time. Praying. Dreaming and evaluating. Yeah. Giving and committing. Yeah. I want to wrap this up with one thought today. Jesus is all in, guys. He's already all in. And the question really for every Westsider is, are you? We don't serve a God who went halfway to our salvation. He went all the way. We don't serve a God who sort of sacrificed for us. He laid down his life. I had a t-shirt years ago when I was a youth pastor that said 95% commitment is still 5% short. I believe that. If I'd stood at the altar with my wife and said, honey, I'm going to be faithful to you 95% of the time, I'd be totally unmarried. (laughs) She would not have gone for it. Following Jesus is an all-in idea. I ask you to pray for the next couple of weeks about God leading you to give. We'll all make a commitment for the second year. If you're new, it's your chance to get in. If you couldn't last year, it's your chance to get in. And then on the 30th, we'll bring those, pledge them together, celebrate communion It'll be an incredible day. I started today by talking about having a simple basal cell skin cancer removed. And also about the fact that we have cancer of the soul. We are naturally self-centered. Life is naturally about how much more house, how much more car, how much better stuff can I accumulate. The antidote is generosity. And the good news is Jesus is the cure for cancer of the soul. Let's go all in, church. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you that you dream and you pray for us, for our protection, for our unity, Lord, for our joy, for us to stay on track with you. You have dreams and prayers for each of us. And you have a dream and a prayer for Westside to reach a 1,000 new unchurched families. 
Lord, hundreds of those are already on that wall outside. Let us add more. Let us pray more. Let us give more. We look forward to seeing you work in even bigger ways, Jesus. In Christ we pray. Amen. Last week, pray bold. This week, dream big. Next week, think legacy. We're going to talk about what kind of world we're leaving for our kids and grandkids. God bless, guys. See ya.